A new interim report released at the request of the British Foreign Secretary says Christian persecution in some parts of the world is, quote, close to meeting the international definition of genocide, with Christians being targeted by extremist groups in the Middle East, Sub-Saharan Africa, and East Asia. For more on this, we bring in the president of the Iraqi Christian Relief Council and senior fellow of the Philos Project, Juliana Tamarazi. Juliana, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank uh, you for having me on, Molly. Yeah, it, it, it's really startling to see that sort of figure, that takeaway from the report, uh, that it could potentially be reaching genocidal levels. Also worth noting from this report, 80% of religious believers who are being uh, uh, persecuted around the world are Christians. Uh, should this be a, a wake-up, a worldwide wake-up? Absolutely. There has been a genocide that is already underway. Uh, and, and perpetrated by ISIS. Uh, as you know, Secretary Kerry uh, announced this as a genocide of the Christians of Iraq and also the Yazidis. But this has been going on for so long. For example, in terms of Iraq, the Assyrians, also the Chaldeans and the Syriacs of Iraq have come under persecution starting 2003 until today. Um, our numbers were 1.5 million today down to 200,000 people. And uh, look at Sri Lanka, look at what happened there, look at what's happening in India. Nobody's really talking about India. Uh, so we're grateful for Secretary Hunt and also Ambassador at Large uh, uh, Brownback for really stepping up to do something uh, in a positive way, in a more meaningful way. But there's so much that needs to get done still uh, in t worldwide. Uh, according to Open Doors report, one out of nine Christians, Mali, across the world are being persecuted today. Uh, and of course, this causes not just uh, potentially death, as we're talking about genocide, but also people being pushed out of their homelands and the religion uh, where it perhaps had a stronghold being forced out of areas where Christians lived. I, I want to take a listen. This is the British Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, speaking in Kenya. Around a quarter of a billion Christians being persecuted, 3,000 losing their lives last year alone, and that that's increasing. Um, and there are many different reasons for that. Religious conservatism, politicians uh, playing on people's um, religious prejudices, state-sponsored oppression, terrorism. He also talked about political correctness. Do you think that plays a role? Absolutely. Actually, I believe the death of most of the people that are suffering today is truly because of the poli political correctness, because the world turns a blind eye to this. And when we are politically correct, we are sympathizing with, with those terrorists that are destroying communities and erasing histories. For example, the Assyrian people in Iraq, our history, it, they're trying to erase our history by destroying our monuments and really pushing out uh, us uh, from the homeland. But you know what, Molly? Persecution looks different in different parts of the world. For example, uh, let's take Iran. Uh, according to the International Christian Concern, they did a report. In 2017, there were 16 former Muslims that were uh, persecuted. But in 2018, 171 uh, former Muslims in, and also three Assyrians that, were, um, that are being persecuted today, Pastor Victor and his family, for example. Uh, in, uh, in Egypt, uh, they are ha giving the Christians a hard time to legalize churches. Mm -hmm. We saw what ISIS did in Sri Lanka. So the way we answer every persecuted situation, it has to be different. Mm -hmm. For example, Boko Haram in Nigeria. Uh, we have to deal with them differently. And perhaps uh, these Pakistan, uh, horrific attacks in Sri Lanka also yes. will be seen as a wake-up call. Uh, Juliana Tamarazi, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. Thank you.